everyone, Donut here. Excuse my voice. I have some kind of throat infection probably from making out with your mom. I don't know, but the buttery voice isn't going to be here. Instead, you get recruited Batman. Today, we're going to be breaking down another shooting, but this time it's out of Los Angeles, Texas. That's right. I'm talking about the hole that is Austin. If you move to Texas, there's one thing that you learn very quickly, unless you're from California. Austin, Texas is little Los Angeles. Tent cities, poop, and rampant drug use everywhere. Syringes as far as the eye can see. And a plethora of people who probably fucking hate my content. Speaking of DGENs, do you know what else DGENs like to do? They like to take your data and sell it on the internet. That's why our sponsor is Aura. Sometimes on the internet, there are data breaches and a bunch of your information is leaked. What these sleazy fucking data brokers will do is take that information and sell it. These sleazy bastards will sell your name, home address, email, cell phone, marital status, homeowner status, estimated home value, interest in charitable donations, credit score, political affiliation, religious identity, gender, and sexuality, your children and family's information, and hobbies such as gambling. And if you're in the military, you might want to listen to this next part. In November, researchers at Duke University found out that over 10,000 U.S. service members' data was sold. It was sold for only 12 cents a person. Guess what else was sold with that data for U.S. service members? Geolocation data. You don't want foreign governments to know where you are if you're in the military. That's where Aura comes in. Aura identifies these data brokers who, who are selling your data and they submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Those brokers are legally required to remove your information. And Aura can handle all that for you. Aura is a US-based company with a 100% US-based customer staff that is available 24-7. But not only can they help you with those data breaches, they offer credit and identity monitoring, antivirus, VPN, password management, comprehensive parental controls, and more. You can get all that for 14 days free by going to Aura.com slash donut. You get everything at one affordable price and the peace of mind knowing that plans include $1 million of identity theft insurance for each adult. Handle those data breaches and protect your family by going to aura.com slash donut. Let's shootings. The shooting that we're going to be breaking down today took place on 6th Street. 6th Street. 6th Street is 6th, 6th, 6th. 6th Street is the party street in Austin. It can be fun. I'm just too f***ing old and angry to enjoy it anymore. It's loud and they're just a bunch of goddamn whippersnappers. Myself, personally, would rather find a quiet dive bar with some of my best friends instead of being around a thousand homeless dudes and two thousand drunk teenagers. It's not all that bad taken in moderation. I mean, the first time I went, me, Brandon Herrera, and Danny Warsnop got sh wrecked at a Dropkick Murphy show. I'm gonna tell you a story real quick. Last time I was there, it was during Formula One, something I don't give a shit about. But for Heather's birthday present, I got as fanciest hotel I could find, and Mr. Ballin hooked us up with some VIP tickets to watch his live show. Thanks again, John. So we go backstage and we hang out with Mr. Ballin and Danny Duncan for a bit. After the show, we went to a tequila bar with Meat Canyon. I got to meet Noel Miller, cool guy, and then everyone went to sleep and I stayed out in front of our hotel for a minute to have that rare, rare cigarette. I only smoke like two or three times a year. I'm sitting out there by myself, looking at my phone and just having that rare cigarette, and suddenly Kendrick Lamar runs out the front of the hotel, screaming at who I'm assuming to be his baby mama on the phone. His bodyguards run out and grab him and usher him back inside. He didn't see me sitting there on the bench. I'm sitting there with a cigarette hanging out of my mouth, confused as <laughs> like. And I was the only one that saw that. <laughs> the next morning, Heather was like, okay. Anyways, not to name drop or anything. <coughs> I'm dying. This channel's killed me, boys. <coughs> I got the black lung. Let's do some shootings. All right, longer. Let's do it. Los Angeles, Texas, 1152 6th Street. About 300 cops are wandering around 6th Street, which is normal. There's homeless guys, there's drunkies, like you need a bunch of cops wandering around. It's loud as f one of those things that I don't like very much anymore when I go out to bars. Some of the police officers were walking by a certain bar and one of the workers came up and said, hey, there's a guy over there who wants to get in the bar and he's got a gun. He was trying to enter the Soho Lounge with a firearm. The guy refused to be pat down by a bouncer, so they assumed, well, f this guy must have a gun on him. But instead of walking away from the bar, the guy decided to hang out in front of the bar. Not only that, but the dude that was refusing to be pat down was wearing a ski mask. Refusing to be pat down, wearing a ski mask. That usually means trouble if I do say so myself. According to a lot of Google reviews, the Soho Lounge likes to tack on extra charges onto people's credit cards. A couple dollars here and there, that's still theft. If it's true, maybe that guy had an extra drink put on his receipt and he wanted to get a little payback. So the cops are concerned because according to Texas Penal Code Section 46-03, places weapons prohibited, you can't take a gun to a bar. Oh, <laughs> I did not know that. Anyways, moving on, several officers approach our 29-year-old suspect. And by several, I mean one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So these 10 officers approach the suspect and without warning, the suspect pulls out a gun and opens fire on them. It went from, hey dude, can we talk to you? To four people shooting it out on a busy street in front of a busy bar. Blink of an eye type stuff, but that's policing. Super pucker factor. Now we have security camera footage from in front of the bar and body camera footage from three different officers there. The suspect, when you watch the video, isn't really hard to miss. The police definitely didn't miss him, but he's not hard to miss with the eye because he's wearing the brightest yellow jacket I've ever seen in my life with a ski mask. As a criminal that kind of contradicts itself. You're hiding your face, but then you're wearing this bright ass, very visible jacket. No one said they were smart. Let's start off with the first body camera angle. This is going to be Officer Christopher Bell, who is closest to the suspect and fires shots first. <laughs> As you can see, it's pretty cut and dry. Guy pulled a gun, cops started blasting. I started blasting, bang, wow. bang. Next, let's take a look at Officer Chad, who was behind the majority of the police officers and captured the incident pretty well at a wide angle. <laughs> And our last bit of body camera footage before we put it all together and watch the security footage. This is going to be Officer Allegretti. Come on down. But hey, do we do we have a do we have that stop? Are we trying to get in? And when we do put it all together, we get the security camera footage. <laughs> This guy definitely wins the Darwin Award of 2024 so far. He pulled a gun on literally 10 police officers. In the end, the suspect ended up getting a round off that did not strike any officers. Three of the officers opened fire on the suspect. Here's the shitty part though. Unfortunately, three bystanders were struck by fire. Two of them received non-life-threatening injuries and one of the bystanders had to be rushed to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. I want you guys to let me know in the comments below if this could have been handled any differently. Did they do what they had to do? Could they have tased his foot? Perhaps given him a hug? You let me know in the comments below in a calm and rational manner. This is a place for civil discourse. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I got for you fine people today. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. I should be doing a couple more this month before we head to SHOT Show. Please like and subscribe. All my sh**. Go to DonutOperator.com if you want to help support the channel. Get some super sweet merch. Go on over to my Patreon where I'm going to be posting again very soon. And follow me on every other social media platform. Until next time, everyone please have a fantastic day. Thank you.